here at the Orlando Museum of Art for the annual Florida Prize of Contemporary Art. And let's see the list of those that are in it this year. Most of them, as usual, are from Miami, or at least working in Miami. Uh, but we'll take a look around and see which one they all already have given the award. And when we get to him, I'll tell you which one it was. And here's the first artist we'll look at, Typo from Miami. It's pretty well known doing street art down there. But these are called die forms. They're actually forms of different things that you can move around. Here's another one here, kind of like children's building blocks. I'll just show off four, and then I'll go up to them. Let's see maybe how he does these. These are all four. Basically just different shapes. You can see these birds. The hand is in all of them. The hourglass. So, die forms have to do with the fact that he's talking about his own mortality. We can see him better here. See the tulip, the two birds, a hand, the hourglass. So, it's a play on the word die. Now I can see it better. I don't know why I had it so up close. This is the ball, a square. See, using color as well. This is the only gallery that's very dark. You can spend time in here just looking at it. Maybe I'll go up to this one too so you can kind of see what this is. See their little light forms lit from within. Of the hand, I'm thinking the hand is the only thing that's in each one. I think it refers to the hand of the artist. And it's interesting, you know, he uses this die form, but this is the only one with the hourglass, which I think would have a lot to do with the death. And here's the art of Francis Bishop Good. She's an artist from Fort Lauderdale this time. Of course, not far from Miami, South Florida, so. And she does a lot of stuff where she starts with photography and then manipulates it. And she always did a lot of stuff for children and forms like this. But now she does a lot of abstract art on, you can see they're just little wood panels. And she also just started with ceramics here. So you can see some of those. This gives you a good idea what it is. This one here. Interesting how these forms bring to mind things like this one from the side looks like a flower case in the flower pot. This one. Here's a triptych caught up the down staircase. And this is from this year. So most of this is current work they're working on. go down here. Look at these. I like this one. This reminds me of stuff I would do when I was young. Just dealing with the problems of the clay. Just not doing what you wanted to do. So, this is Francis Bishop Good. And this is the work of Jamila Sabor. She works for the Nina Johnson Gallery in Miami. She was born in Jamaica. She's very much into language and also more of a conceptual artist for this. Oost Lugo. Neon Transformers print on cotton rag paper. And she does a lot of performance arts as well. I've seen her shows. And Nina Johnson also at NADA. I've seen some of her work. Car 
first. Which is what I hear geologically. It's interesting how the chords become part of these words. Karst is, has to do with the German word for geological phenom phenomenon. See this? Video work in the whole show. She does some performance stuff. This must relate to that. This is a black forest, bauxite, black sea. Then again, this is Jamila Sabor from Miami, the Florida Prize for Artist for the year. Here we are, works of Gavin Perry. He's really in the process. I guess the photographs were a little bit like this. Of using this resin and seeing what it does to create artworks is influenced by McCracken and some of the Southern California artists. This one's kind of nice. You can see how he really lets the resin go. This is called Speed Trials. So let me just go over here and I'll go back to the one that really caught my eye. This is untitled, You Are Preferred Root Down. You Are My Preferred Root Down. He's obviously, they said, very much influenced with the colors from Miami and the light. He lays these layers on top of each other. So this is Gavin Perry from Miami. Now this artist has her practice. She's really from Japan, but she has her practice in, in Jacksonville. She starts with drawing and then does like paper cuts. So these are very intricate. It's called the drift. I guess she's dealing kind of with her own feelings here. You can see the paper coming apart here. It's very intricate um, process. Yeah, some of this kind of reminds me of Swoon, the way she does these patterns around things see her other stuff. Obviously this is very Japanese. It's interesting how there you might not be able to see it, but it's all like pinned to the wall. I almost wonder if I saw some of hers in um, Fat Village before on one of their art nights out. This one is framed with a chicken, but it obviously has her in it as well. So this obviously would be very time consuming. Very good proportion of me. Again, I'm sure she used some machines to do this. This one's kind of the most interesting. It's emergence. I can go back down here and just look at a couple we 
missed hers. Obviously, the birds have a big part to do with what her practice is. distance. This almost looks like fur or something, the way she's made this. Here they're like raccoons, or I don't know what exactly that is. But this is Horimi Manihan from Japan originally, but does her work in Jacksonville. And now we get to maybe the best known of the painters this year, Tomas Eason. Did a lot of figurative stuff, but then he started to become more into seeing the grass in South Florida in probably, I would assume, the Everglades by that. And he became very abstract. He works with Frederick Schnitzer Gallery. Um, he had an exhibition at the ICA. I've seen his paintings at the PAM. There's a lot of movement. abstract. I show a little bit of the brushwork here. This is called SOS Cuba. He originally came from Cuba and started in the 80s there and he left and came to the States and ended up settling in Miami. Um, this is a quite monumental painting. His original paintings were very um, political and that kind of got him in trouble. So even with that they said that he was able to do quite a bit. This one, the colors are very different. Yeah, those seems to be primary with this. from Cuba but living in Miami. And here is are the only photography I've seen so far, London Amara. And kind of interesting, she uses like the old collodion wet plate type photography. This is called topophilia. And topophilia is a strange emotional attachment we have for one place. These are actually not collodion, but they're called Ambrotype archival pigment prints. And she is from, or at least does her practice in Bonita Springs, which for most of you, you probably not know where that is. It's near Naples. So this is in the southwest part of the state. I think I'm getting into some of these, so I'll try to stay over here where we can see them better. This one you can see where she's trying to do a lot with the developing as well. It's called alternate vision. I would say with photography, it's interesting how you can make yourself look at things differently because you're using it almost like a different eye and the process kind of takes over as well. Love shooting film. Obviously this is not on film, what I'm filming with right now. Obviously these things, this is very much for those that Go to Florida and only see the beach. This is what it looks like when you get out into the kind of old areas of Florida. That's the secret to water. Here's a figurative one. These last two. This is called Humility, London Amara. Uh, the next artist we'll look at is Dominic Lubovy. I've seen these before. I think he used to show with 
uh, Mindy Solomon in Miami, but he works in St. Petersburg. He's one of the only Bay Area artists who works with steel here. He uses actually an anvil that he brought. He's originally from the northeastern part of France, but his studio is here in Florida. Some of these are hard to hard to get in here. It's kind of this is the most lit gallery of all of them for this show. But he loves using the anvil, and his everything kind of starts with a drawing with lines, and you can kind of see that. We use these lines to, to get things even kind of cool here. You can get the lines on the, f the floor as well. So his stuff has been around for quite a while. Definitely like that one. His new ones are called the forest. He uses wood, which says brings him back to growing up in northeast France. And here you can see these. see some of his drawings. These are all pastels and how he relate to his sculpture. So this is again Dominic Lebovi. Now we get to Sarah Stites. Interesting the colors. She works mostly on Yupo paper, so she soaks the paper first and then works with it. The black lines are very important. This is called blue hand. Okay, so obviously that's the blue hand. Interesting, I like what she did is for her, she talked about who her influences were. So it almost looks like angry birds. I don't know that much about them, but I have seen them. Is she said her influences were Max Beckman, De Kirico, um, Paul McCarthy, and what was the other one? I just remember reading, oh, Barry McGee. So probably like most of the Miami artists, he's done some stuff out on the streets. This one's kind of interesting here. You always get that bird. And then... Sarah Stites. And we come to the winner, which is Jared McGriff. Interesting that he was born in Los Angeles, grew up in the Central Valley of California, and after he got his MBA from NYU, he ended up in Miami living, or at least working in the Alapata neighborhood, which is where he finds his subjects, and he it says that he got a lot of the colors from living in Miami. You can see he really moves around the paint a lot. Interesting how he does. It's very figurative, but he uses a lot of painterly things. This one is called Trio is One.
interesting. Well, when he hits to the faces, he really moves them around quite a bit. This last one over here is called Lime and Sunshine. I just saw one of his paintings at the ICA in Miami. They have a thing of their collection, a show of their collection, almost taken over the whole museum. And one of his paintings there, some of these paintings here are owned by the Rubel Museum. He is a, he works with Spinello Projects in Miami, which has won a lot of these awards. This wall is probably the most interesting one. Again, you could see a lot of the painters. I remember a few years ago, he was here in Orlando to see a show by Grace Hardigan. And she does some things where she does like abstract expressionism, but she used figurative stuff, which is kind of different for the abstract expressionist. And this kind of reminds me, of, this one is huge here. Obviously the beach shows us a lot of Miami. I like how he does the the background here, how he lifts it up. It's kind of looking at it a different perspective, but probably of all of them, this is the one that kind of gets, I like the most as a machine for imagination. Safety is luxury. Let me see what he does. Here's the sandal. for the colors here. That big one is called They Become the Depths Between Them. So just one last look of him. Congratulations to the winner.